We are a voice of prayer, bringing heaven to earth. Let's pray over the teaching tonight. Father, we thank you for this day and the blessings of this day. We thank you for the Holy Spirit who is energizing us even at this moment. We thank you, Holy Spirit. You are welcome in this place. Come and have your way. Uh, teach as you would teach, Holy Spirit. Your truth, your ways, your power, and your glory uh, that, that sends the glory of God all around the world because it's not about one person. It's just about Jesus. It's about the crucified Jesus, the resurrected Jesus, the power that came on Resurrection Day, the power that was released, and we have the opportunity to have it flow through us even now. So, Father, I thank you for the anointing. I give you praise for the glory of your word that will go forth and change lives because it's about the glory of God. It's about the change and the kingdom of heaven that has come. Thank you, Holy Father. We give praise for Jesus. Holy Spirit, have your way. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. I want to say thank you for all who subscribe. May the blessings of the Lord be upon you, each and every one. And may you move in the power of God from this teaching. Um, Nothing will be impossible is the title tonight, and it's Matthew uh, 17. Matthew 17, and we know that as uh, that chapter that talks about the transfiguration. Let's begin. Seeing in the Spirit, hearing in the Spirit, and to operate by the Spirit. Matthew 17, verses 1 through 21. Now this will be the new King James Version. It says, now, after uh, six days, uh, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, led them up on a high mountain by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became, uh, yes, as white uh, as light. Now, that transfigured, uh, that, that Jesus was, that, that, the, the glory of the light from heaven came on him. Uh, and remember, Jesus was always going up on the mount to pray. And this time when he went, again, he took Peter, James, and John. Please pay attention to who's there as this is going on. Transfigured. That word transfigured is the word metamorpho. It's to change, to transform. Uh, it is the same word that we find in Romans uh, 12, verses 1 and 2. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brother, uh, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice that is wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2, and, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind uh, that you might prove that good, that acceptable, that perfect will of God. And I don't know about you, but I want to live in the perfect will of God. I just don't want to be satisfied with the good. Just go to the pew and sit down. I want to move in the power of God. And so, <laughs> hallelujah. And so, uh, something my husband and I have been talking about, we, we, we have found this in Psalm 138.8, but God will perfect that which concerns us. And we want to be perfected in God. And so we ask him every day, you know, thank you, Lord, for that, that you will perfect that which concerns us. Amen. And so... Oh, we, we see that uh, this is, again, that transfigured is being transformed. And so at that very moment, that instant, uh, on the moment, uh, it happened to Jesus. He was transformed into that uh, of what God had purposed. And for us, uh, we go through that. It still has to do with a new birth. And so these three tabernacles, Matthew 17, uh, 3, it says, Behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him. And then Peter answered and said, Lord, it's good for us to be here, if you wish. You know, 
let us make three tabernacles here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Now, he already opened his mouth and stepped right into it uh, because this isn't what God was doing. Uh, and we're going to move through this to see what was going on. Now, most people have had this teaching. They know it's about the, uh, the, the law of Moses and the prophets coming together. It's going to be fulfilled in Jesus. But we're going to look at something else tonight. <clears throat> Uh, and so uh, he said, Lord, it's good for us to be here. If you wish, let us make here three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. And so I just want to give you a little bit about the sons of thunder and Peter. So with the sons of thunder, from Mark 3.17, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James, to whom he gave the name Boanerges, that is, the sons of thunder. And so that word Boanerges, Boanjuries uh, was uh, has the meaning of commotion to rage, and so these two eyes brothers were sons of thunder. They could rage. They they evidently were commotion. They could go somewhere and happen, and because Jesus called them this, uh, this meaning uh, is Aramaic, and then it's like a crashing of thunder would crash. Uh, just some. Um, points here uh john was close to christ became an apostle uh was the son of zebedee ambitious overzealous he wrote first second and third john in the book of revelation um uh, uh, and then we get to james who was the brother one of 12 disciples zealous for the lord ambitious for honor james was ambitious for honor and also he was martyred in Acts 12, verse 2. So he gave his life to witness for Jesus. Amen. And then Peter. Yes, Peter. We know the character of Peter. Many of us can relate to Peter. Uh, seemed to open the mouth at the wrong time, Peter. <laughs> and so Matthew 17, uh, that we have read about Peter, this character. He was, yes, a fisherman. Uh, he knew about water. Knew much about fish. He knew about opening his mouth also at the wrong time. He was called to discipleship. He was called an apostle. He walked on water and was commissioned to feed uh, Christ's sheep. Uh, and I wanted to give you this from Matthew 16, 14 through 19, because it's operating in the spiritual realm. Matthew 16, verse 14. And so they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, others, yes, Jeremiah, uh, and one of the prophets. And he said one of them, but who do you say that I am? But who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter, verse 16, answered and said, you are Christ the Son of the living God. Verse 17, Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Habar Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed that to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Verse 18, And I say to you that you are our Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on, uh, on earth will be loosed in heaven. And so he was not building the actual church on Peter, but was the spiritual kingdom sure. that Peter now was operating in. And so ultimately it has to be uh, by the Spirit of God. And so uh, God interrupted Peter. Peter again opened, had opened his mouth, and God is interrupting. Matthew 17, verses 5 through 8. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them and suddenly a voice yes came uh, <laughs> a voice came out of the cloud saying this is my beloved son and whom I'm well pleased hear him Amen. doesn't just say look at him but hear him right. uh, and verse 6 and when the disciples heard it they fell on their faces and they were greatly afraid but Jesus came and touched them and said arise and do not be afraid and when they lifted up their eyes they saw no one but Jesus only so this was spiritually discerned is the foundation of the Jesus came to build they were seen in the spirit and so have we made room for Jesus in our hearts to make that space for his continual presence or are we willing to set up a tent for others uh, who we can see you know 
Janie Jean over there, let's set up a tent for her every week to come out and just lead us in praise and worship. When actually, uh, it may be the Holy Spirit wants to do something different. Uh, and so we have to watch those things. We must be cautious of seeing in the Spirit, hearing in the Spirit, and to operate by the Spirit. What was of the Spirit had gone from their seeing in truth? People sometimes just want to be with the famous few, however glorious. Just stay there, set up this tent, and just live with these heavenly guests. Evidently, Peter was very much inspired. Yes, it was Moses. Uh, yes, it was Elijah. And so some can enjoy themselves to a specific service or come and enjoy to, you know, enjoy to like a praise and worship service and just hear people do praise and worship. Uh, but the others can perceive like Peter and let's say, let's just set up a tent. Let's just do this every week. You know, let's do this every day. You know, let's set up a tent and just live here. And uh, but this is what the Lord was wanting to do. Uh, I mean, they people can make their pressing statement much like Peter and say, "Well, let's like invite this socially known author or pastor, have them come for regular visits." And yet here, uh, these were told by God, "This is my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased. Hear him, hear his instructions." And so uh, we've received our salvation. We, we, we are to acquire that and know that we have that power of God. But do we know that we move by that power each and every day and every moment? Not to set it up and make it a ritual and a religion. A religion. And so um, Jesus had come for suffering, not for setting up a temporal kingdom. Uh, um, you know... <laughs> Uh, you know, he didn't, uh, you know, he didn't say, come on, Moses and Elijah, let's go down to the valley now. Mm -hmm. You know, we five and no more party, let's party on, dude, you know, and that's, it's not what it was about. He, it just says that Jesus spoke with them and then they were gone. Mm -hmm. Galatians 1 verses 3 through 7 I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. It says, Grace and spiritual blessing be to you and soul peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ the Messiah who gave, who yielded himself up to atone for our sins, to save, to sanctify us in order to rescue, deliver us from this present wicked age and world order. And so many times people want to continue to set up the, the world order. Because this is a spiritual kingdom. It's supposed to be by the Spirit. And too many people want to go back and let's just do it a religion. Let's make it a religion. Let's put it in a box. Let's put it in a box and seal it up and, and go and come back next week and open it up. Hallelujah. In accordance with the will and purpose and plan of our God and Father, to Him be ascribed all the glory through all the ages of ages and the eternities of the eternities. Amen. So be it. Verse 6. Now remember, this is Paul is writing to the Galatians and he says, I'm surprised and astonished that you're so quickly turning renegade, deserting him who invited and called you by the grace, the unmerited favor of Christ the Messiah, and that you're transferring your allegiance to a different, even an opposition gospel. Uh, verse uh, 7, not that there is or could be any other genuine gospel, but there are obviously some who are troubling and disturbing and bewildering you with a different kind of teaching. Now, they were trying to mix uh, another religion with the gospel. Mm -hmm. wow. So the, they were offering this as a gospel and they were perver uh, perverting it and to distort the, the gospel of Christ the Messiah into something which it absolutely is not. Uh, God's word came through Jesus Christ and it's burden removing yoke destroying anointing that comes through Jesus and Jesus only. You can't mix it and expect Sarah Sue to continue with what she's doing unless she's actually called to do that. You know, well, you know, she, she did really good last week. Or, you know, so, so and so, they really, you know, prayed really good last week. Well, it was probably for that specific thing. It's important to ask the Holy Spirit what's next. And so, hallelujah. Moses and Elijah, let's look at these. Moses, the drawn out one, whose latter laugh was that demonstrated the presence of God. 
He was protected as a baby, purposed to be the great leader, and was also purposed to be a prophet. Many of his writings from uh, of those that he did, uh, the, of what we call uh, the, the the Pentateuch, is actually that that was which of was of the Old Testament uh, was written right by him and prophesied of Jesus. Elijah, the prophet, demonstrated faith in God with boldness. No matter the circumstance that came from those who hated him to those who desired his attention, Elijah held true to God always. It didn't matter how many hated him at one time. I mean, I'm thinking of 1 Kings 18 and the 450 false prophets, the Baal prophets, uh, under King Ahab. Uh, Elijah anticipated his God to do the extraordinary in the most unexpected sources and ways. Remember the brook Cherith, he was fed by ravens. Mm -hmm. Both Elijah and Moses were pregnant with the miracles of God. These moved from comfort to activity. It was moving from the, that mount of encounter to being active within God's presence in the valley. Peter, James, and John got to experience this, and we too can experience, not by building the tent, but for because we are the tabernacle of God. He resides in each of us. That's why there wasn't going to be one and just make a, just about a, just a few. What Jesus was going to do was a, for a kingdom that was forever. It was a spiritual kingdom that we were going to actually walk into and see. That's right. By now, we, we are those who live by faith expecting it. We're reaching forward with God's word. And so we move into it. Hallelujah. A prayer helps us to hear and to see God. Matthew 17, 9. Now as they came down from the mountain, Jesus commanded them, saying, Tell the vision to no one till the Son of Man is risen from the dead. Tell no one. This is an encounter with God. Tell no one. A revelation comes in a secret place. From the mountain encounter being transfigured is what we know about is the new birth. We've now been uh, come into, we receive Jesus, we come onto the mount to have that relationship with God. We have opportunity to commune with him, to be in his presence, to hear his truth, and then to come out of that place and tell others about. Within the cloud, God spoken in his presence, we can hear clearly. First Thessalonians 2.13 says this, For this reason we also thank God without ceasing, uh, <laughs> because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you welcomed it, not as the word of men, but as the truth, the word of God, which also effectively works in you who believe. So any, in any service, even in these teachings, there could be, you know, a hundred people that hear this word, but they'll take different parts of it from it for their life. Sure. And so it's, it's encountering to have, going for the meat of God. Jesus desired them to hold on to the encounter as for the individual to take them in that place of the spirit. Yes. And to recite, to encounter God. Yes. Was to pray experience what he would bring uh, by his word. And, and Jesus had received these visitors. He had received Moses, Elijah. He was speaking with them. Jesus would consummate the law and the prophets. It would be revealed not in the moment, but in the time coming, not by the work of any man, but by the power of God. When Jesus walked out of the tomb, hallelujah, Jesus walked out. But they, 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 he, they weren't supposed to talk about that encounter. Jesus told, told them not to tell the vision but there's a time when you have to to walk through something to be tested and a lot of people say well I'm not tested God's not gonna test me he loves me well if he, he's not testing you I wonder why because you you walk through things you go through them but to, to, to take that encounter and just you know rave about about well it was way for no for uh, you know that's hindering that can be hurting to others and so uh, this is something that Jesus did in that he didn't want it talked about until he went through it and come out on the other side. And this is his testimony. Right. You can't have a testimony without the test. 
And so, um, so too many times man or woman is ready to reveal that special encounter with God. Uh, and those can be good, but uh, are best when they have been fulfilled in that which like was fulfilled in Jesus. You must walk through it. That is the one who has the testimony after the test is completed. But many will tell you today they're not tested and God does not test them. When that day uh, comes for the fulfillment of that word, in Jesus, and he walked out of the tomb, God was glorified, not man. That's right. But if they had told about that vision, who would have been glorified? Mm -hmm. Moses, Elijah, we're going to make some tents. We're going to just rally around this and do this, you know. That's not fresh manna. Um, and then, so to the encounter with God is prayer, to walk divinely in his presence, presenting him at every turn, wherever we go. To love people in that which is uh, of God, in his peace, but to remind them that he's righteous. Mm. Good. Uh, and and, that, and our thought process is to always be occupied in him. Mm. God should be foremost in our thinking. And when we're embarking on a new job, you know, maybe a new ministry, uh, or just abide with the family in that peaceful environment of God and in his love for which he has for us, for our family and body body of believers and sometimes our encounters must be prayed on for an amount of time and held till it's confirmed in Jesus and then Jesus will tell us to go and give the testimony and there will be those open doors for that testimony now meditating on what Jesus told them by the vision not to speak of it yet they ask him a question so he's got them thinking they're meditating they're going off the mountain and they're talking about this Matthew 17 verses 10 through 13 verse 10 and his disciples asked him saying why then do the scribes say that Elijah must come first Jesus answered and said to them indeed Elijah is coming first and will restore all things verse 12 but I say to to you that Elijah has come already and they did not know him um, uh, but did to him whatever they wish likewise the son of man is also about yes to suffer at their hands verse 13 uh, then the disciples understood that Jesus spoke to them of John the Baptist uh, so he had them to think beyond themselves and yes entertainment uh, are we too busy being watchful in the natural uh, to uh, are we too concerned uh, about the, the, that and forget about the supernatural uh, are we just name droppers you know Peter just could have been a name dropper it's like well I was with Moses and Elijah and we just spent the day together <laughs> and have five in you know and it's we five and no more. No, Jesus wasn't going to allow that. And Father God said, hear my son. I'm well pleased with him. Hear him. Mm -hmm. and, so, <laughs> and so we move now down to the valley. They've been on the mount. They've been in prayer. Now they're moving down. Down in the valley, a boy's hill. Matthew 17, 14 to verse 21. And when they come to the multitude, a man came to him, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is an epileptic. He says, <clears throat> uh, suffers severely, for he often falls into the fire. And uh, he says, often into the water, verse 16. So therefore I brought him to your, your disciples, but they could do nothing. Uh, and so it says, uh, you know, uh, we know this was a amount of disciples. Uh, Jesus had more than what we would say the 12, three were with him, but there's other numbering more than 70 that he had. So there was a number of the disciples were there and they just could not uh, cure this young man. Verse 17, Jesus answered and said, oh, faithless and perverse generation. Yeah, that's something you just want to be called by Jesus. Oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him here to me. And, and Jesus rebuked the demon, and he came out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Verse 19, and the disciples came to Jesus privately. I mean, they were already having issues, and they didn't want anybody else to hear they were having these issues. So they came to Jesus privately and they asked him, why could we not cast it out? And Jesus said, because of your unbelief. Mm 
Mm-hmm. For surely I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. He pulls it all together with the next verse in verse 21. However, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. It is by the supernatural, the power of the Holy Spirit in us and through us being directed to do the Lord's instructions for us to do. It will not be anything of a religion, but the power of God. If you don't pray, you don't have power. We are to pray, seeking his plan for our neighbors and community. Fasting that which you do not need. Uh, you know, how about putting down the cell phone? You know, sometimes my husband and I will just shut the TV off. And, you know, we'll just pray. He'll pull the word out. We're just reading, just reading scripture, reminding, or we'll go over some of the teaching that I'm working on. But putting aside, even maybe a dinner, uh, you know, a dinner out with maybe friends or maybe your husband, putting that aside. And then taking that time to go and just do a power walk yeah. in prayer with Jesus. Um, uh, in our communication through prayer, we are seeking to gain a character that's worthy, one that is the faithful, the one who perseveres like Jesus, who is in the peace, seeking another's well-being, ready to give a word of faith that is in us. Uh, so the followers of what is good, First Peter 3, 13 through 17, if we are the followers of what is good, even if we suffer for righteousness sake, we are the blessed. We are not to be afraid of their threats or be troubled. Verse 14, and sanctify the Lord God in our hearts, ready to give a defense to everyone who asks the reason of the hope that's in us. May we know those who try to defame us or revile us of our good conduct in Christ, that they will be the ashamed. In the will of God, it's better to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. Uh, Prayer will bring us into God's presence. Um, In the Greek, peace means to obtain quietness by removing what seeks to distract and destroy. It's not a compliant serenity. The peace of God is not a compliant serenity. It's an aggressive taking out, but which is a very forceful extraction. To me, while I was working on this, I kept thinking of going to the dentist. When someone goes and they're extracting something, removing to make a place for the new, like removing a baby tooth to make room for the new tooth. I remember our uh, granddaughter having to have uh, you know, a couple of teeth removed to make room for the new teeth. And so the, the, those things that have to be, you know, if you were saved at you know, 25 or 35, not as a small child, there's a lot of stuff to be extracted, a lot of stuff to be removed. And so the peace of God that will be destructive and to which distracts you. What authority you carry will be the same amount of peace you carry in God. If you have, if you have no peace, you're always anxious, then you have no authority. Whatever we carry, the amount of peace, that we carry that same amount of of authority in God. And so if you cannot speak out in boldness of what God has done for you with authority but remain anxious, then I would doubt that you carry any peace and have not known his peace at all. If we cannot tell others about what Jesus has done, certainly this would be true for those who do not. Luke 12, 8 through 10, and I got this today. I got this word today. Uh, Also I say to you, whoever confesses me before men, him, the Son of Man, will confess before the angels of God, but he who denies me before men will be denied before the angels of God. Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man, it will be forgiven him, but he who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. From that verse 8, confesses me before men that confess is with the covenant knowledge that we have in jesus uh in jesus and with jesus that's what that word confesses means that we have that covenant relationship with jesus if you don't tell someone about jesus and you're just like seems like you're just telling them they're okay where they're at you know if they're in you know the wrong kind of relationship uh but uh Uh, Because verse 9 says, But he who denies me before men, this deny is that which contradicts the word given by Jesus. They will not be confessed before the angels of God. Contradicting God's word, that's not giving them his word. 
So denying is saying, well, I'm going to contradict your work because we're going to be buds and we're going to rub elbows and we're going to do some shoulder things and I'm going to be buds with them and you know wear their sin on your t-shirt. But that's, that's saying that you're confessing uh, what they're doing. So you're denying them Jesus. Wow. It's denying what that Jesus and that you have a covenant wow. with a covenant covenant keeping God wow. the authority of his wisdom James 3 verse 15 the superficial wisdom yes that superficial wisdom is not such as comes down from above us earthly and unspiritual it's animal even devilish demonical so it's like those people who say well okay sirrah sirrah Hey, Sarah, Sarah, what will be, will be. Uh, I'm not going to pray. I'm going to expect the same. What I did last year, I'm going to do next year. Okay, Sarah, Sarah, what will be, will be. That's earthly. That's the world. Mm -hmm. Verse 16, for wherever there's jealousy, envy, contention, rivalry, selfish ambition, there will also be confusion, unrest, disharmony, rebellion, and all sorts of evil and vile practices. Now remember, peace is a fairly violent word. Mm -hmm. It's like if you come, come by the river, if you come by a river, that river is not peaceful. Oh, look at that peaceful river. But, but like my husband and I were talking the other day, you get in that river and you're not going to find out that it's not peaceful at all. It's full of currents. That some will drag you down and some will move you down to, or to the other side. I mean, we've seen kite boarders just like five miles from here get caught up in a current that moved them all the way to the other side. And had to be rescued. Which there's not a beach over there. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so, uh, verse 17, But the wisdom from above, wisdom, Sophia, the spiritual, the anointing, that anointed word, that wisdom of God is first of all pure, it's undefiled. Mm -hmm. So you have to give them the undefiled word. Because if you give them your word, Hallelujah. Then it's peace loving. This anointed word is first of all pure, it's undefiled, peace loving, that we know as that burden removing, yoke destroying, it's courteous, it's considerate, it's gentle, it's willing to yield to reason, full of compassion, good fruits, it's wholehearted, it's straightforward. And I looked up the meaning of this, that a straightforward just seemed to stand out to me when working on this, but that straightforward in meaning is the painless, it's uncomplicated, honest, and will not compromise. Straightforward, will not compromise, will not compromise the things of God. It's Im impartial, unfeigned, from, free from doubts, wavering in sincerity, the harvest of righteousness, that conformity to God's will in thought and deed. It has to be doing. If you're rubbing elbows with them and you're wearing their t-shirts, that's not in God's thought and God's deed. That's in yours. So that's against God. Uh, and remember the meaning, to not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It's that fruit of the seed, sown in peace by those who work for and make peace in themselves. Um, uh, those that will tell others about Jesus. That peace means concord, agreement, harmony between individuals. Now this is the Amplified, and the Amplified continues to say, with an undisturbedness, an undisturbedness and a peaceful mind free from fears it's free from agitating passions and moral conflicts and it sealed it with this it's because <laughs> I looked up that concord and I want to see even in the biblical but it's an agreement arranged by the Prince of Peace to agree with him mm -hmm. the covenant keeping God wow, conquered wow. so from unbelief from Matthew 17, 19, because of your unbelief, are we preachers of the gospel? Do we really know the word and ask the Lord the meaning when we do uh, not understand what's being uh, uh, in the word when we're reading it or maybe someone's reading to us? Is our conviction in the steady and strong word of God or in the opinion of something else? Success should be known within our hearts that is from the Holy Spirit and not ourselves. To be instrumental in faith is speaking out in faith, teaching in faith, believing the very word for ourselves from the mustard seed faith. A seed which is thriving, increasing in size. You cannot and will not take people any further than the distance you've gone in the, in the word of God yourself. You cannot take anybody anywhere unless you've been anywhere with God. Um... Uh, 
Uh, <laughs> hallelujah. What we have believed in our heart is revealed in our lives and actions and comes from the secret place. It comes from the times that we're in prayer with God. Uh, what is revealed in your life? Has God rescued you from the mouth of the grave? Or has he set your feet on solid ground to proclaim his goodness? Do you seek his glory or do you seek your own glory? Uh, reproving them, Ephesians 5, verse 9, it says, For the fruit, this is the Amplified Bible, For the fruit that affect the produce of the light or the spirit consists in every form of kindly goodness, uprightness of heart, and trueness of life. And try to learn in your experience what is pleasing to the Lord. Let your lives be constant proofs of what is more acceptable to Him. Take no part and have no full fellowship with the fruitless deeds and the enterprises of darkness. Darkness, don't go there. Wow. Don't go in that place. But instead, let your lives be so in contrast as to expose and reprove and convict them. Not wear their t-shirts. Mm. Hallelujah. Yet today you can see Christians advertising sin. Mm. Amazing. Verse 12, For it's a shame even to speak of or mention the things that such people practice in secret. But... Verse 13, but when anything is exposed and reproved by the light, it's made visible, it is made clear. And where everything is visible and clear, there is light. Therefore, he says, awake, O sleeper, arise from the dead and shall shine. Make day dawn upon you and give you light. Verse 15, look carefully then how you walk. Live purposefully, live worthily, accurately, not as the unwise and the witless, but as the wise, as the sensible person, making the very most of time, buying up each opportunity, those opportunities to spend time with God, uh, to reflect on what he's been saying, meditate on the word of God, and, and pray, because the days are evil. Do not get drunk with wine, for that's debauchery, but be ever filled and stimulated with the Holy Spirit of God. So in closing and bringing glory to God, we are to live by the Holy Spirit who will help us to put to death anything that tries to ride over us. By the Holy Spirit, we pray and allow Him to show what does not belong in our lives, in our hearts, uh, in our thinking. By the Holy Spirit, we move in the power that will block anything that will keep us from giving the gospel to, to the people. Ours is not to set up those tents uh, and to live within them, uh, but we are to, to live from the presence of God on the mountain, to live from the presence, to take his presence and be active, to take his presence and go down into the valley so others may be touched by the hand of God so that his glory will be seen and people will be set free and healed. In Jesus' name, amen.